Good morning, Sunface, and welcome back to a new Recovery MCO Sunday. Reverend Rodriguez Una will be leading the service today, and Reverend Stephen Gundang will be speaking on mission and evangelism, the heartbeat of God. Today's readings are taken from Exodus chapter 19, verse 2 to 8, Romans chapter 5, reading from verses 1 to 8, and Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 to chapter 10, verses 8. So sit back, relax, and enjoy worshiping God. Good morning and blessed Sunday, everyone. Today is the first Sunday after Trinity. To begin our online spiritual service, let us say the introductory sentence together. Jesus said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Taken from Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 and verse 38. Let us turn our eyes upon Jesus, look full into his wonderful face. Let God take charge of everything, including the thoughts of our hearts this morning, and to fully engage ourselves in this service. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this service. We pray that you will be blessed by our praise and worship this morning. And we speak Jesus over you. We speak Jesus over your household, over your families, over your situations and circumstances. We speak the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, the name by which every knee should bow and every tongue confess. No other name but the name of Jesus.
Lord be with you. The collect of purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for the First Sunday after Trinity. O God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments, we may please you both in will and in deed, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 19, reading from verses 2 to 8a. Chapter 19, reading from verses 2 to 8a. After they set out from Rephidim, they entered the desert of Sinai, and Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the descendants of Jacob, and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt, and, now, and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. So Moses went back and summoned the elders of the people and said before them all the words the Lord had commanded him to speak. The people all responded together, We will do everything the Lord has said. This is the word of the Lord. The New Testament reading is taken from the book of, of Romans, chapter 5, beginning to read from verse 1 to 8. Peace and hope. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. You are my light and salvation. Who shall I be? You Of whom 
The Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 9, verse 35, to chapter 10, verse 8. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdoms, and healed every disease and sickness. When he saw the crops, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Jesus called the twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and the brother and his brother Andrew, James, son of Jebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, son of the Jewelot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any towns of Samaritans. Go rather to the lost ship of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, Cleanse those who have leprosy, dry up demons. Freely you have re received, freely give. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, my Lord and my Redeemer. Amen. Greeting to all of you, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord. As a church, we have not met face to face for almost three months in a row. The ongoing 
pandemic has caused so much suffering to so many of us. Many medical practitioners are under great stress dealing with the situation. Many more are suffering, some because of the loss of income, others because of separation from family members, and worse still, some suffer the loss of their loved ones. Many people are asking, if there is God, then why there are so much evil and suffering in the world today? Some are asking whether God exists at all. If he does, then why he is not stopping this problem? Others are also asking what kind of God that we have if he allows suffering. If he is a powerful God as he claims to be, why up to now he has not intervened and stopped the virus? Or perhaps he doesn't care. Now, as Christians, we are told that God cares. I believe that he truly cares for us despite what is happening right now. The three passages that we read for today proves that the God of the Bible is God who cares for his people. In fact, he cares for them a lot. From our Old Testament reading for today, we learn that God had brought the people of Israel out of slavery in the land of Egypt. Using his own word, he said to them, I carried you on eagle's wing and brought you to myself. So basically, God saved and delivered the Israelites from Egypt and brought them to himself. That is how much God cares. Not only that, God said if they obey him and keep his covenant, he would make them his treasured possession. Today, we are the people of God and his treasured possession. We know this because he is the God who is the same today, yesterday, and forever. His character of caring does not change. And he cares for us. He cares for us, does not stop here. He gives us much more. He gives us the spirit of adoption as son and daughters so that we can cry out to him as Abba, Father. Yes, we are suffering at the moment. Yes, we are in the midst of this pandemic. But despite this problem, we have the comfort and assurance that God cares. Because He cares, He continues to reach out to us today. In the gospel reading for today, we heard that Jesus went to town in villages, teaching, healing, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. Bear in mind that Jesus is God in the flesh. He is the Word of God who took on human form so that he could be present physically with his people. Now, what does this mean? It means that even though he is God, yet he took all the trouble to save us. He took all the trouble to leave the comfort of heaven to be with us in this world, full of suffering and pain. In fact, he doesn't have to do that. He doesn't have to come down to our level. But he chose to. 
He chose to come down to our level because He cares, because He loves us, because He loves you. I think some of us may still be wondering if God does indeed care so much for us, then why is it up till now we have not gone over this problem? In fact, if we study the history of God's people in the Old Testament, every time there, there was a calamity, God was speaking and telling His people that there was something wrong with them. I think God is doing the same to us today. He is telling us something. He is behaving like a loving parent who disciplined his misbehaved children, even though it is well within his power to stop the suffering. Many a times, God did not do that. Instead, he allows suffering to take its course because God, as what he had done in the past, is using suffering to convey a message to us. So what is God's message for us today? Every time we speak of COVID-19, one thing that comes to our mind is the word death. Indeed, the virus is deadly because many people had died because of the virus. To date, we heard that more than 400,000 people all over the world had died because of this virus. That is more than 67% of the total population of Kuching. That is more than the population, the whole population of Miri, much more than the population of Bintulu and Cebu, and so on. And this figure is not small. But one thing we got to know, there is another virus which is far more de deadly than COVID-19. And this virus is called sin. The worst that COVID-19 can inflict on us is physical death. But sin, not only it can cause physical death, it also will cause spiritual death which is eternal suffering and eternal separation from God. In the eyes of God, suffering is a means of discipline and character building. Through suffering, He can save us from a much more deadly suffering. The epistle for today says, suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character and character hope. That means suffering has its place in our salvation. It is not entirely a bad thing. God allows suffering for a noble cause. It is not because does God does not care. Imagine if we have never experienced suffering in our lives, as human as we are, if we have not known what is suffering, there is a tendency that we will not be able to see the need for God. For this reason, God allows suffering because suffering can make us realize that we are sinners Suffering enable us to see where we are wrong, and suffering can bring us back to God. And for this reason, parents, they punish their children for their misbehavior, and God is doing the same thing. So when there is suffering, and when God appears to allow it, 
God is in the midst of shaping our lives to be Christ-like. And for this reason, Paul used the phrase, we glory in our suffering. What does it mean when Paul says, we glory in our suffering? It is not because suffering is fun, but because to him, suffering is corrective. Suffering is discipline. And suffering is where God is molding our character. And therefore, during this difficult time, we should not despair because God is at work molding, shaping, and transforming our lives. So my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, the priority for God today is to deal with the more deadly problem that is the problem of sin. COVID-19 may stay with us for a little while. It is a continued reminder that we need to buckle up for we have a bigger problem. That is the problem of sin. The problem is not only is sin more deadly, the fact is everybody is infected. The scripture says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Basically, no one is exempted and no one can escape because everyone sinned. And solving this problem is urgent and crucial. But the good news is that God has the solution. And the, the solution is found in Christ Jesus. And Jesus Christ is the solution. In fact, Jesus Christ is the only solution for our sin. That's why he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And this is what Jesus means to us. While we are still sinners, Christ died for us. And if we declare with our mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. This, however, does not mean that we can take lightly the problem of the COVID-19 pandemic. God is telling us that despite this problem, we should not lose sight of the greater problem that we have. That is the problem of sin. And we need to surrender that sin at the feet of Jesus. Because Jesus has the solution. Because Jesus is the only solution for our sin. And that is the good news of the kingdom of God, which we need to, pro to proclaim to the world. In other words, the good news is God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And for this reason, God himself came down to us in the person of Jesus Christ. For the same reason, Jesus commissioned his disciples to continue his mission to save humankind from sin. He said to them, go and make disciples of all nations. And the same message is also meant for us today. We are to continue the mission of reaching out and proclaiming the gospel. We are not to keep the gospel to ourselves. We are to share the good news. We are to proclaim it. During Jesus' time, the number of evangelists were few. 
In fact, the evangelists are his 12 disciples. And that was why Jesus said, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. But today, we don't have that problem. We should have no excuse to go out and make disciples. Today, we have more than 2.3 billion Christians worldwide. If, if only 10% of that 2.3 billion Christians are doing their parts, we would have 230 million people active in proclaiming the good news. The problem is we don't have that 230 million active people in mission and evangelism. We are not like the disciples of Jesus, even though there were only 12 of them. But each and every one of them did their part. They went out and preached and proclaimed the Gospels. Now, what do we need to do? What does this mean to all of us? How should we go on? We need to respond to the call of God. We need to play our part in the harvest. We need to go down to the field. We need to serve the Lord because the Lord wants us to partake in the harvest. That is His desire for you and I. That is what He wants for all of us. And the good news is, the harvest is still plentiful. What would happen to the unrich if Jesus were to return now? If we don't reach out to them now? Jesus said, these people would be helpless. They would be like sheep without a shepherd. But we are called to include them as part of the harvest. Now, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, I would like to end by inviting you to ponder. I would like to invite you to ask ourselves, to ask yourself on where we are at the moment, on how well are we doing in carrying out this command of the Lord to go and make disciples, to go and proclaim the good news. Let us give ourselves a second, asking on what is God's message for you, for me, for each and every one of us. What is that personal message from God to us concerning this matter? Now, if you have got the idea, that is God's desire for you. That is God's heartbeat that we go and make disciples. If only we could play our small part, each and every one of us, if only we could play our small part, the collective result, the collective outcome would be tremendous. And God's name would be glorified. Shall we say amen to that? Let us pray. Almighty God and our Heavenly Father, we thank you that this Sunday we are able to worship you even under these very difficult circumstances where we cannot gather in one place in a manner we are used to. But we thank you, Lord, that in spite of this, we are still able to worship you together in this manner. 
Lord, we also thank you for your words. We pray, Father, that you will continue to encourage and equip us so that all of us could each play our small part in reaching out and proclaim the good news. We also pray, Father, that you'll continue to keep us strong and healthy, especially during this difficult time, so that we will be able to serve you. Thank you, Father. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Stephen, for your message on missions and evangelism. Here are the notices for this week. Drop us a line and we will pray for you. Leave your number and we will call you. Prayer meetings are on every Wednesday nights at 7.30 p.m. Superbook Sunday School is online and has tons of activities and Bible stories for your children. We have many house groups waiting to welcome you in fellowship. Some are offline for now, but most of them will be meeting physically real soon. Stay tuned for updates. assistance is still available. Know of anyone who needs help? Call the number on the screen. The Bishop's Lent Relief Fund is a great way to give to the community during this time of crisis. Believe it or not, your gift really helps. Continue giving to the church. Your gifts help the church to operate and serve the community. Thank you so much for giving and God bless you. Reverend Sika will now lead us in intercession. Let us pray for the church and for the world. And let us thank God for His goodness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, You promise through Your Son, Jesus Christ, You hear us when we pray in faith. We want to pray for the Anglican Diocese of Kuching. Strengthen Donald, our Bishop. Nelson, our Assistant Bishop. Bradley, our Vicar of St. Faith. O clergy, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name be united in your love. We pray that you continue to reign your Holy Spirit upon our leaders to empower them to prepare and equip members for service and the training of the same in the work of ministry to build up the body of Christ. Your word from the gospel reading this morning remind us that the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Father, we pray you will send more workers to work in your vineyard. Therefore, we pray that you encourage and strengthen our leaders in their commitments Equip them with wisdom, knowledge that comes from you, so they, in turn, use the wisdom to prepare us for your service. We also pray the church will continue to abide in Jesus, our first love, and not to abandon his love. If we have fallen, we repent. Help us to continue the work that you have called us to do. Do not remove your love from us. Lord Jesus, thank you for reminding us 
and teach us to love you because you first love us. Strengthen us to, so that we will not take your teaching, especially the message of salvation and redemption for granted. Father God, teach us to deepen our love so that we will continue to proclaim your love to others. If we have failed you, forgive us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world and for our nation. Heavenly Father, we pray for peace to prevail despite the current situation, problems and uncertainty that the whole world is facing. We thank you that while we are trying to contain the COVID virus, many will heal. And this can only happen, which we believe is a testimony of your divine intervention. Thank you for your words of encouragement, asking us to humble ourselves, seek your face, pray and confess our sins, and you will hear our prayers, heal and bring peace to our land. Father, teach us to humble ourselves and seek you earnestly. Remind us always to think that others are better than ourselves and that we be mindful for the need of others. We confess of our sins and pray unceasingly for your mercy and forgiveness. We continue to pray for our country of Malaysia and the leaders. Thank you for them and their commitments by putting the needs of the people as one of the main agenda during this time of the pandemics. By providing for the less fortunate which we believe help to alleviate their problems. We pray that our economy will recover rapidly so that the country finance will be stable and business be as usual, creating and able to provide more job opportunity for the jobless, especially those who lost their jobs and having difficulty to provide for the needs of their family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also want to pray for the sick. Comfort, comfort those who are sick in body and spirit, beside those afflicted by the coronavirus. We want to remember those who are suffering from chronic and other diseases. We pray for your healings touch to be upon them. We thank you for answering our prayer by healing some of them. And we believe your healing will be extended to the others as well because of our confidence in you that whatever we ask in accordance to your will, you will hear us and answer us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. According to your promise, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Faith Church and all your saints, we commend ourselves and all Christians to your unfailing love. Most merciful Lord, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we have been blessed by the Word of God shared to us this morning and clinging to the promises declared in the Word of the Intercession, let us recite the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Act of Spiritual Reception In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church, 
where the Holy Eucharist is celebrated in churches throughout the world in the face of current pandemic and remembering the community of St. Faith, our own parish, and those worshipping you at the moment online, we long to give you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. We present to you our body and soul as a living sacrifice with the earnest wish that we may always be united with you. And since we cannot now receive you sacramentally at the moment, we pray that you will come spiritually into our hearts that we may be filled with your presence. We unite ourselves to you and embrace you with all the strength of our souls and the life you have given us. Let nothing ever separate us from you. May we live and die in your love. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And give us, we pray, such a sense of all your mercies that our hearts may be unfaintly thankful and that we show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, may the Spirit of God empower you to love and serve Him. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us online. We will see you again soon. Hallelujah. Blessed Sunday, everyone. Let's enjoy this song as we remember. We want to give everything to Jesus because He cares for us. He is still in control over our circumstances and our situations.